Welcome to our lesson on temperature scales. So, what is temperature again? It is the average kinetic energy of the molecules and atoms within an object. But just exactly how can we measure that? Well, we use various different scales. In particular, there are three scales which are still in use around the world today. The Fahrenheit scale, the Celsius scale, and the Kelvin scale. Let's take a look at this clip that explains a little bit more about the Fahrenheit scale. The Fahrenheit temperature scale has always seemed a bit arbitrary to me. I mean, why does water freeze at 32 degrees? Why that integer? And what exactly does zero represent? According to many sources, the Fahrenheit scale was defined by setting zero degrees equal to the temperature of an ice, salt, and water mixture, and 100 degrees being roughly equal to human body temperature. In 1702, Romer was housebound after breaking his leg, and to pass the time, he devised a brand new temperature scale, with the freezing point of water at 7.5 degrees and body temperature at 22.5 degrees. Now this might seem odd until you consider that Romer wanted the boiling point of water to be 60 degrees. As an astronomer, he had experience dividing things by 60. So if you take this scale, divide it in half, in half again, and in half once more, you find the freezing point of water one eighth up the scale and human body temperature three eighths up the scale. So at their meeting in 1708, Fahrenheit learned of Romer's temperature scale and adopted it as his own, adjusting it slightly because he found it inconvenient and inelegant on account of the fractional numbers. So he scaled them up to 8 and 24. And this is the original Fahrenheit scale. He produced thermometers for some time using this scale. But then, at some later point, Fahrenheit multiplied all numbers on his scale by 4 setting freezing point to the now familiar 32, and body temperature to 96. So what exactly did zero represent on the scales of Fahrenheit and Romer? By many accounts, it's the temperature of a salt, ice, and water mixture. The only problem is, there are different descriptions of these mixtures, and none of them actually produces the temperature they're supposed to. More likely, I think they picked the coldest temperature in winter, set that as zero, and later used ice and brine to calibrate new thermometers. In his day, the Fahrenheit thermometer was the best you could get, but now his scale is only used regularly in the Cayman Islands, Bahamas, Belize, oh, and the United States of America. Now, it can get a little bit confusing depending on what scale you're using and how to convert between them, as you'll see in this clip. Good morning, I'm Yumi Ron, just Mason Derulo. As we can see on the East Coast, winds moving across, but it will stay mostly sunny. As we can see, temperatures reaching 30 degrees. Yes, I said it. 30 degrees! 30 degrees? Shows in tank season already. <laughs> hey, bro, you're gonna need a jacket. It's cold now, but trust me, later it's gonna get hot. How hot? 30 degrees. Whoa, 30? Yeah, so joke's on you, your big jacket. My god, that's freezing temperature, man. What do you mean, 30 degrees? 30 degrees Fahrenheit. What's Fahrenheit? Who's that? Man, that's our temperature scale out here. What? No one told me that. You have a different scale? Why? 30 degrees Fahrenheit is minus 1 Celsius. So, the Celsius scale is based on the boiling points and the freezing points of water at standard atmospheric pressure, meaning at the Earth's sea level. So, Celsius devised this scale to be 0 degrees, which is the temperature at which water would freeze and 100 degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water would boil. So exactly how did Celsius go about calibrating his scale? So what he did was he took some pure ice and he crushed it up and put it into a funnel. Why did he crush it up? It's so that the thermometer that he made could fit perfectly inside the ice and be totally surrounded by it so that it could come into contact with it. And then he waited for the ice to melt. Why did he wait for the ice to melt? Well, that's because ice melts at zero degrees Celsius, but it can be in its solid state of ice at any temperature less than zero degrees Celsius. So you have to wait until it melts because before it melts, it could be minus one, minus two, minus five degrees Celsius. Only when ice melts is it truly zero degrees Celsius. So only when the ice begins to melt will you mark zero degrees on the thermometer. Next, how do we determine the upper fixed point? This is the temperature at which water boils. So you take some water, doesn't have to be pure water, you then boil it and you do not place the 
thermometer inside the water but above it. Why shouldn't you place the thermometer inside the water? Well, because if the water is not pure and it has impurities, then those impurities will make the boiling point of the water at a number greater than 100. It could be 101, 102 degrees Celsius, all depending on how much impurities there are. The more impurities there are in the water, then the higher the boiling point will be. So, the fact of the matter is though, the steam that is produced, no matter how many impurities there are, is always produced at 100 degrees Celsius. So you place the thermometer above the boiling water, not in it. So now, let's convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa. Our formula to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit is F equals 950C plus 32. So, let's say you have a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. How much would that be in Fahrenheit? Well, you would multiply 100 times 9, which is 900, and then divide that by 5, which is 180. Finally, you would add 32 to 180, and that would give you 212. So 100 degrees Celsius is equal to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And 212 is a familiar number. You may notice that it is actually the name of a perfume. I suppose that perfume company wanted to say, oh, if you wear this cologne, you'll be hot. Now, finally, we come to the Kelvin scale. The Kelvin scale isn't based on how humans feel or the temperature at which water boils or freezes. The Kelvin scale is based on all atoms. In particular, Lord Kelvin devised this scale such that zero on his scale would be what is known as absolute zero. It would be, according to the kinetic theory, the temperature at which all atoms would cease vibrating. Since you cannot vibrate backwards, that would still be vibrating, then his scale meant that zero is actually zero. So on the Kelvin scale, there are no negative numbers, only zero and positive numbers. So how do we convert from Celsius to Kelvin? Well, the formula is quite easy. The temperature in Kelvin is equal to the temperature in Celsius plus 273. So let's say you wanted to convert 100 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. You would simply add 100 plus 273 and your answer would be 373 Kelvin. Please note, it is not degrees Kelvin. It is simply 373 Kelvins. No degree symbol. And that is the end of our lesson today. See you in class.